Good morning guys, welcome to Hope Daily uh, on Wednesday, we're halfway through the, the working week as it were. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well, I'm coming to you nice and early um, before I, I go into school this morning. So if you're up uh, and if you're an early riser or you have to be up early for work like me, uh, then say hello in the comments, let me know that you're watching um, and just engage as you want to engage uh, throughout today. Um, we're, we're continuing in Esther, we're coming to the end of uh, this wonderful book, it's, it's a fantastic story, uh, isn't it? Really enjoying it. Uh, we're in chapter 9 today, uh, before it, we finish off tomorrow with chapter 10. And this passage is all about the Jews triumphing uh, over those who wanted to kill them. Um, so let me just pray for us, uh, and then uh, as, as some of you guys might join, um, and then I'll, I'll get started. Uh, Father God, we thank you for for Esther. We thank you for her story. Thank you for how you used her and Mordecai, uh, and and how you uh, delivered the Jews and saved them uh, through uh, these people, through Esther and through Mordecai. Lord, we thank you that you're the same power that was there present. The Lord is still here today. I want to pray by your power and by your Spirit that you might speak to us um, from your Word this morning, Lord Jesus. Um, and throughout this day too, in your name, Amen. Amen, guys. So yeah, if you're there watching, I can see there's someone. But I can't see on my phone who it is. Um, just say hello in the comments. Uh, let me know that you are are watching this morning. So we've come to the point where you know Esther, with the help of her cousin Mordecai, has saved the Jews from genocide. Basically, not just a bit of death. You know, literally them all being wiped out um, within the 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 whole land really and um, this evil plot of Haman has been foiled he's been killed um, but his supporters are still around those who are going to carry out this evil law are still around uh, and yesterday um, Jamie talked about how there's a, there's a reversal occurring you know what had happened at the start of this book and where the power lay and who ended up with the power i.e. Haman had all been switched over and completely reversed um, to, onto Mordecai uh, and to Esther and how events had just been completely reversed. So if you didn't catch Jamie's video yesterday, tune into that. I'm not going to go into too much depth about that. But basically Mordecai, um, Esther's cousin, has now the power of the king, literally. He can sign things with um, the king's signet ring. Morning, Byron. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Um, and we're just continuing about this. Um, now that Mordecai and Esther uh, are in better positions of power uh, that they can use now to protect the people. So um, we're going to read the first 15 verses to start off with um, and, and we'll get into it. So it says, Now in the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar, on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's command and edict were about to be carried over, on the very day when the enemies of the Jews hoped to gain mastery over them, the reverse occurred. The Jews gained mastery over those who hated them. Again, another reversal, uh, like Jamie mentioned yesterday. So instead of the, the Jew haters being able to carry out what they wanted to carry out, which was to kill them all and, and basically commit genocide, um, it says the Jews gained mastery over them. And here's how. So the Jews gathered in their cities throughout all the provinces of King Ashurus to lay hands on those who sought their harm and no one could stand against them for the fear of them had fallen on all peoples all the officials of the provinces and the satraps and the governors and the royal agents also helped the Jews so those in charge of these different provinces these different areas of this of this um, Persian Empire uh, they were actually helping the Jews and you know for them killing all these supporters of Haman too because they feared Mordecai. So for Mordecai was great in the king's house and his fame spread throughout all the provinces for the man Mordecai grew more and more powerful. The Jews struck all their enemies with the sword, killing and destroying them uh, and they did as please, and did as they pleased to those who hated them. In Susa, the citadel, that's like the, the central point of the Persian Empire, the fortified city, Itself, the Jews killed and destroyed 500 men and also killed Parathansha, Dalphin, Aspatha, Poratha, and Aldea, and Aridatha, and Pamatha, 
Arise, and Aridae, and Vedatha, the sons of Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews, but they laid no hand on the plunder. That's like their possessions, uh, maybe their children, their wives, their money, anything else that, that belonged to them. That very day, the number of those killed in Susa, the citadel, was reported to the king. And the king said to Queen Esther, In Susa, the citadel, the Jews have killed and destroyed 500 men, and also the ten sons of Haman. What then have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now what is your wish? It shall be granted to you. And what further is your request? It shall be fulfilled. So here even, after a lot of the, the king's own people, own Persian people, have been killed, He's not bothered about that. He's bothered about what does Queen Esther want. He still wants to please her because she has been given such favour by God in the sight of the king. And Esther said, If it please the king, let the Jews who are in Susa be allowed tomorrow also to do according to today's edict. Let the ten sons of Haman be hanged on the gallows. So the king commanded this to be done. A decree was issued in Susa and the ten sons of Haman were hanged. The Jews who were in Susa gathered also on the fourteenth day of the month of Adar, and they killed 300 men in Susa, but they laid no hands on the plunder. So guys, we see, we saw here yesterday, at the end of chapter 8, uh, that Jane went through how Haman had had this law that couldn't be repealed, so that you know he was going to kill the Jews and others in other cities who were Jew haters were going to kill all the Jews, get rid of them. He'd sealed it with the king's signet ring. It could not be turned over. The Jews were in real danger. But then, yeah, in the end of chapter 8 there, we, yesterday, we saw how Mordecai, because he couldn't, and the king couldn't, repeal his law. But Mordecai had passed a law on behalf of the king for the Jews to be able to defend themselves and to fight back and to kill their attackers, basically to protect themselves. And they certainly did, as we see here. Again, what another great reversal. Um, you know, this punishment was coming for those who were enemies of the Jews. And they were receiving this judgment for what they were about to do and try to do to the people of God. Uh, and this gave uh, the Jews a victory, it gave them triumph um, uh, through God's amazing protection in their life. You know, it basically here it's saying that God put the fear um, into the enemies of the Jews and the fear of Mordecai into the satraps and the royal agents and the governors of the land. So this seemingly impossible situation, this seemingly desperate situation uh, of death and a certain end had been completely flipped around by God through Esther and Mordecai. And then we see this public hanging as well of Haman's sons. They've already been killed, um, but Esther asked for them to be, all tend to be hanged. And I think in the original writing is when they are, they are listed um, down underneath each other and the Jews... Uh, when they celebrate the festival of Purim, which I'll come to in a minute, they try and say them all in one breath, and I think it's, they, some scholars would say it's representative that they were all hung one above another, all hung at the same time. Now, they were already dead, but by hanging it embarrassed the family, it shamed them, and it also scared others off from doing what they were trying to do, which was to kill the Jews. So, so you might be saying, then, well, why? So Esther, is she quite bloodthirsty then? She was asking for more death. She was asking for a hanging of dead men, basically. Well, no. What actually is happening here is Esther's making sure that there is a full end to the the risk and the um, the fear that the Jews might have been living under, getting rid of all their enemies, fully um, feeling free, feeling um, saved from what could come upon them. Now, I don't know about you, you know, hello Harvey, I think he's trying to join in. Um, where do you have, have fear in your life where you feel like you're maybe losing the battle? Maybe it's getting away from you, you just can't fight it. You, you just feel like, you know what, I haven't got the strength, I haven't got the know-how, I haven't got the ability, I just can't do it. Maybe you're feeling like, oh, I've just lost, you know, I give up, I'm beaten. Maybe at this time of lockdown, you're just feeling like that, you're feeling beaten. You're feeling lost, you're feeling hope, hopeless, and just completely, ugh, another lockdown, it's dark outside, it's not even nice weather to go and talk to people on doorsteps, I'd go for a walk to the park, I just feel all hope is lost. Well, we need to know, church, there is a victory and a triumph to be had in Christ that we can all share in now and for eternity. Yeah, life is hard sometimes, there are real difficulties we go through, 
we can feel like we're down, we're beaten, we're broken, we're lost. But we need to look to Christ because he has already won the victory. He has already triumphed. He has already been victorious over death and sin and all that the, the enemy and enemies try to throw at us, all the spiritual powers, all that they throw. Christ has already defeated them and we are on his side. You know, and you may, and we may also have earthly victory and triumph over what seem like hopeless situations like Esther and Mordecai had here. But even if not, God will use these situations. He's going to use this lockdown, you know, for your good and for his glory ultimately. And we have to trust in that, knowing that he is victorious, he is triumphant, he uh, is in control. You know, this morning, or maybe if you're watching later, you might have to comment in. And, you know, what situations have you seen difficulty in or just felt completely lost in or uh, like you've just completely been beaten? Um, but how then God has brought victory into it? That'd be great to see that uh, on the chat. Just a real testimony if you want to share those. Um, but yeah, we need to remember that, that there is a victory already won uh, and that continues to be won on our behalf by Christ. And we can have we share in that. Let's continue. Verse 16. Now the rest of the Jews who were in the king's provinces also gathered to defend their lives and got relief from their enemies and killed 75,000 of those who hated them. But they laid no hands on their plunder again. This was on the 13th day of the month of Adar. And on the 14th day they rested and made this a day of feasting and gladness. But the Jews who were in Susa, so that's the capital again, gathered on the 13th day and on the 14th. And then they rested on the 15th, making that a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore, the Jews of the villages who live in the rural towns hold the 14th day of the month of Adar as a day of gladness and fast feasting, as a holiday, and as a day in which they send gifts of food to one another. So this is, is introducing this idea of the, the Feast of Purim, which I mentioned earlier, and I'm not going to carry on reading the rest of this chapter. You can look at it yourselves. Um, well, basically, this was a, a, a feast, a festival to remember God's faithfulness to uh, the Israelites, they were doing it once here, um, but certainly Jews even today remember it. Uh, and the people of, of God were taught to keep remembering this, to remember the faithfulness of God and how he had, had saved them from this genocide. Um, and this little section here that I just read, you see how there's like different days they celebrated it on um, because they finished their, I guess, getting rid of their enemies on different days. Um, but they were all coming to celebrate the feast with, with rest, so celebrate the faithfulness of God, sorry, with rest, with feasting uh, and with gladness um, to him. And it goes on to talk about how they can unify that because they were celebrating on different days uh, going forward in the rest of this chapter. But we see here Mordecai didn't want the people to forget the faithfulness of God. You know, just as the Passover as well and the Feast of Unleavened Bread in Exodus were created to be reminders uh, or in the hands of and the mouths of the Israelites as they took of the Passover meal uh, of God's deliverance um, from this from slavery. Uh, so this day of rest and celebration was to be celebrated um, and remembered to remember the and thank God for His faithfulness. You know, think about all those times earlier. Maybe you're thinking and you, or you've written down some of these times where you were feeling broken, you were feeling lost, um, but where God just brought amazing victory for you. Or maybe just your testimony, the fact that you were so lost and broken like we all were and far from God, but yet he redeemed us, he, he claimed us and he gave us victory over our sin uh, and over death. And how quickly we forget this, this victory and triumph that we've had in God, how we forget God, how we forget him in our lives where he has been faithful to us. You know, one time for me, I guess, would be when I was, you know, I was growing up and I was a teenager, um, and I and I was I was bullied, um, particularly mainly verbal, not not physical, but for, for years. And you know, it was it was really hard. But God gave me amazing victory in that and triumph over that. Uh, and God was so faithful to me in that. But often I can forget about that. Uh, and there's other times as well where you know I really needed a job or I really had to deal with difficult situation or difficult people. Um, you know, and you might have that too uh, within your job, your home, your friends, neighbours, work, where it's a really difficult situation. But God gives you, gives you triumph, he gives you victory uh, in it, uh, and he is so faithful to you. But how quickly we forget that. And maybe, like I was saying earlier, these difficult times now or difficult times you've been in during this lockdown, 
where God has been so faithful to you and he's given you victory and he's given you triumph over your thoughts and feelings that have really been getting at you, that have attacked you, these difficult situations, but how faithful he has been to you, how he has given you victory, how he's given you triumph in these. You know, we have a triumph and a victory in Christ, no matter what situation and difficulty we find ourselves in. Whether that is an earthly sense of victory and triumph now, or whether it's a kingdom triumph and victory that we all have uh, in him. But we must remember his faithfulness and we must praise him for that. We mustn't allow ourselves to forget it. And even more than that, it should this reminding ourselves, like the Jews were doing, of God's faithfulness, of how he has helped us to triumph and to be victorious. Whether that's in specific situations or just in the fact that we are saved and we are redeemed and we are going one day to be with him. And that he has the ultimate triumph over sin and death and all things. That should give us a reason to be more hopeful and to be trusting in God next time. You know, when we come across a difficult situation, instead of feeling doubtful and fearful, we should be able to look and go, do you know what? I remember when God was like that for me and he was faithful to me there. And he was faithful to me there. And he was faithful to me there. And I had triumph there. I had victory there because of Christ. And I can have that again. That is how we need to live our lives, guys. And I'm not saying it's easy, and I'm not saying I am certainly perfect in that, because I certainly forget too. But we need to remember those, that how God has been faithful to us, how he's given us triumph, how he's given us victory. Because, guys, we are, we are on the winning side. We're not on the losing side. We're on the winning side. You know, we need to know that God has given us a hope uh, in all things. You know, if, if we're forgetting his faithfulness, we're basically giving no hope to God at all. Forget ourselves you know we can't do all on ourselves but if we're forgetting the faithfulness of God uh, and you know thinking oh we're de defeated we're beaten we're forgetting that God's right there he's right here with us he's he is faithful to us he is above all things so just as we come to a close this morning you know we are triumphant now and eternally through Christ's victorious sacrifice and conquering of the grave uh, and death so we must remember this and all his many times many 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 times uh, of faithfulness to us to lead us to a place uh, of trusting him in fully and I know it's not easy and I know none of us are going to be perfect in that but remember that we have the victory we have triumph uh, in him you know, I remember the um, the song by Elevation Worship. The chorus is, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to the Lord. That is completely right. The battle belongs to the Lord. It's not our battle to fight on our own. The battle belongs to the Lord. And he, we need to let God fight our battles. Remember the song Surrounded as well. I'm, I'm gonna end up singing all morning here, but you know, um, that's talking about this is how I fight my battles we fight them with God so that, so we need to let God fight our battles knowing that we're on the winning side with him that is where the victory is the victory is in Christ it is in him you when you are in Christ are on the winning side you can't lose you, could, you are going to be triumphant because you're on his side so today guys I want to encourage you, encourage us, encourage myself to remember his faithfulness and live triumphantly. Just as I clo close this morning before I pray, if you do have any comments or, or questions from this passage you want to ask, or maybe you want to just share those things, as I said, uh, situations when you kind of saw difficulty, felt like you'd lost, you were broken, but God brought vic victory into that. It'd be great to see that in the chat. It's an amazing testimony to share with one another. Um, but let me just pray for us, guys, uh, and, and then I'll let you go. Father God, I thank you so much that you have the victory. You have won. Death and the grave are defeated. They are no more. Uh, and Father, I thank you as well for your faithfulness to us, even in this life now on, on the earth. Lord, how you give us victory, how you give us triumph, how you are faithful to us. Lord God, I just pray that you would just help us to live with the attitude of living triumphantly, knowing you are faithful to us, knowing that we are on the winning side and we have already won. And Lord, that you would help us to live um, in a victorious and a triumphant life, remembering who it is who has the victory and letting you fight our battles for us, Lord, because ultimately we can't do it on our own. We need you to fight them for us. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to trust more in you to do that. Lord God, as we seek to live triumphantly. 
Help us today to do that as we go and throughout this week in your name. Amen. Amen, guys. I hope that was helpful to you. I hope that was encouraging uh, to you today. As I said, please comment in later uh, and let me know some of your thoughts on this passage or on living triumphantly. And it'd be great just to see some testimony of where maybe you've felt broken, felt like you've just been beaten, but yet God has brought triumph, God has brought victory uh, into your life so that we can encourage one another uh, at this time. Hope you have an awesome day, guys, and don't forget to tune in tomorrow for Esther 10. See you later, guys.